taken in the book of Genesis chapter 21 starting to read from verse 8 to verse 21 Hagar and Ishmael sent away the child grew and was weaned and on the day Isaac was weaned Abraham held a great feast but Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had born to Abraham was mocking and she said to Abraham get rid of that slave woman and her son for that one that for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac the matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son but God said to him do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman listen to whatever Sarah tells you because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water so she went and filled the skin with water and gave a boy, the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. And this is the word of God. God who hears and you are able to meet the needs of your people. We want to pray that you may speak to us who you are one to remind us to strengthen us to guide us and also to renew our faith in you. That we may continue waiting upon you because you see our suffering you hear our cry. Speak to us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have heard the word of God from Genesis chapter 21, beginning to read from verse 8 to 21. I want to address the topic, God sees and hears. This story of Hagar and the family of Abraham and Sarah started in chapter 16 where 
Sarah lost all hope of getting a baby and she suggested to her husband Abraham that he may take Hagar, her maid servant, and bear child or children with her. Because God has not blessed me with the children. You can bear children, we, we can raise a family with this, my maid servant. And Abraham forgot the promise of God. He accepted the suggestion. But once Hagar became pregnant, there was a problem in the family. And Sarah forgot her desire, forgot her promise as a human being to raise her family through Hagar. She expelled Hagar. But we see in Genesis uh, chapter 16 from verse 13, the angel of the Lord appeared to Hagar and asked her where she was going and she was very honest and said, I'm lying away from my mistress. And the angel of the Lord commanded her to go back and she, the angel also told her that when she bore the child, she will call her Ishmael, meaning God who hears. And at that point, Hagar gave God a name, God who sees me. When I yesu asifiwe. In African families, many African people have grown up in polygamous families. Polygamy is often justified and being as being acceptable to God by referring to Abraham and other servants of God who had more than one wife. Yet, those who defend this practice cannot ignore conflicts such as the one in Genesis 16 from verse 21. Although our God is compassionate and will intervene in times of distress, as we see in Genesis chapter 16 verse 7 to 14 and chapter 21 verse 14 to 21, it is always good to keep in mind that polygamy was never God's idea. And so, we should not refer to this text saying that Abraham was a friend of God, the father of faith, and he was polygamous. Abraham struggled in handling differences between his sons and the difficulty he had with the sibling rivalry which often is the case in polygamous families. The rivalry first starts with the mothers who want to push their children into strategic positions in their family, then later in the children. Sometimes it may not end as well as in the Abraham's case, but the promises of God to make both Isaac and Ishmael Great nations should inspire us today. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Yes, fathers have struggles. They struggle to keep peace, fellowship, unity in the family. But it is good to remember that our Father in heaven has plenty for the Isaacs and Ismaels of our time. So in times of need, let us turn to him and he will rescue us. As I come back to the story of Hagar, Hagar represents or she is a victim of domestic violence which we are experiencing today in our nation. Hagar is a victim of discrimination. Hagar is a victim of sexual violence, which most of our teenagers are going through in Kenya. It was not her choice to have sex with her master, but she was compelled. 
Hagar can also be said to be a victim of rape. But God who sees, God who hears, at a point of need, he rescued her. What can we learn from this text? That God sees. God saw Hagar when she had ran away from her mistress. And because Hagar had to give birth in this family, the angel of the Lord told her to go back. And that is the time she realized God was seeing her. God was watching over her. When Hagar was expelled by Abraham, and when they were in the wilderness, and all the surprise, God finished. The Bible says that when Hagar was so desperate, she could not provide for her child. She feared to see her baby die. Mothers die with their children. Mothers go through a lot of pain with their children. The Bible says she kept the child aside, not to watch him die. And the child continued to cry, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry. The mother continued to say, we are in the wilderness. There is no water. But God had the cry. Praise the Lord. God hears the cry. And God saw the crying eyes of Hagar. And he opened her eyes to see a well of water. A spring of water. Are you a victim of discrimination? Are you a victim of domestic violence? Are you a victim? And you have been laid off from your workplace during this coronavirus season. Maybe all the provisions of the family have run out. God sees. God hears the cry of children like Ishmael. God is able to see through as the children grow up. May the Lord help your eyes to see where he is leading you, to see where he is opening doors, to see where he is providing, to see where he is guiding you. Fathers, may the Lord help you to give you wisdom as you struggle with issues in your family, with issues in your house. May the Lord grant you wisdom so that all the conflict may end well. The Bible says, God was with the boy as grew up. So God will be with our children as they grow up. But we need to be there for them, to guide them, to instruct them, to protect them, to provide for them. We don't need to throw them away. We don't need to abandon them because of problems. But let us be there for our children. Hagar was there for her child, even when she was so desperate. And God saw her cry. God heard the cry of the boy. As the psalmist in Psalm 86, let us pray during the time of trouble, and God will hear us. His ears are attentive to them that call upon him. His Eyes look upon the people who wait upon him. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.